Hi, everybody. Last week, we talked about how we can differentiate by using definition, which was limit h approaches to 0 for f of x, that's h minus f of x over h. Now, this week, we are going to talk about how we can differentiate by using derivative rules, which is quite easier and faster than differentiating by using definition. Now, let's start with the power rule. Power rule. Now, power rule, if I have y equals x to power n, where n could be any power, then the derivative would be nx to power n minus 1. So, all what we do, we just multiply the power by any coefficient we have, and then we subtract 1 from the power in order to differentiate. Now, let's take a quick example about this one. For example, let's say that we have y equals 5x power 4. Then, what we will do? In order to differentiate, we will multiply the power by the coefficient. So, we will have 4 times 5, which is 20. And we are going to subtract 1 from the 4, and we will have 3. And that's it. This is how easy and fast it is. Now, from this one, the power rule, we may derive some shortcuts. For example, if I have y equals x, then I want to differentiate, then the derivative is only 1. Now, why is that? Now, we all know that x has a power 1, degree 1. So if you take 1 down and you subtract 1, x will end with power 0. And we know that anything to power 0 is 1. Or you can just say directly, derivative of x, it's only 1. Now, if I have y equals nx, then the derivative would be only the coefficient. Because as we said earlier, x has degree 1. So you multiply 1 by n, it will be n minus 1. So x will be, would be degree 0, and then x would be 1. 1 times n, you will have only n. So simply you can just say, if I have nx, then the derivative is only n. However, also we have another hint. If I have y equals a constant, where constant can, could be any number, or a radical, or pi, for example. Constants such as 1 over 2, 3, pi, e, radical 5, and so on. Then the derivative of any constant is 0. Now, also we can use distributive property while we are differentiating. For example, if, I have, if we have a function that has more than one term, then we are going to differentiate each term individually by itself. Now, let's take a quick example. We say that f of x, just a matter of change, instead of keep writing y, we say that we have 7x power 2 minus 10x plus, let's say, radical 7. Then now we are going to differentiate each term by itself. The derivative of f of x would be, now this one, directly power rule, degree times the coefficient, 2 times 7, 14, and we subtract 1, it is 1. Or we just write 14x, no need to show the 1. Now, this one, it follows the same rule which we mentioned before. Nx, derivative of nx, it's only n. So, we will take the 10 only. And here we have a constant. And as we said, derivative of any constant is 0. So, no need to write the 0 because this one is 0. So, you will end up with this one only. Now, let's go for the exponential and logarithms. We say that we have y equals ln u, where u could be any function. u is a function. Then the derivative of ln would be simply derivative u over u itself. So we say y equals ln 5x 
power 10 minus 30x. Then here, in this case, you will say, okay, let u be 5x power 10 minus 30x, which is this one. What else we need? We need the derivative of u. So let's differentiate u. Same thing, power rule. 10 times 5 is 50. And we will subtract 1, you will get 9. This one is in x, so derivative it's only n. So we will have minus 30. Now we have the u and we have the derivative of u. So now we will say, okay, derivative of y is equal to derivative u. 50 x power 9 minus 30 over u itself, which is 5x power 10 minus 30x. Now, this is how we differentiate len. Now, let's go for log. What about if I have log? Y equals log u and you might have a base if the base is not mentioned we know for log the default base is 10 now derivative log let's let's start with derivative u over u just to show you that it is similar to the len but we what we will add extra multiplied by len b where b is the base whatever base you have here so there we take one example here. Y equals log seven and let you be twenty X minus three. Then you'll say all right, let you be twenty X minus three. So derivative U would be N X derivative it's only N. So it's only 20. A constant derivative is 0, so no need to write it. So now, finally, we will say derivative of y is equal to derivative u, which is this one, which is only 20. Over u itself, the whole u, which is 20x minus 3, multiplied by len the base, len, and the base is 7. So we'll just say len 7. This is how easy it is. Now, someone may say, what about if I have radical, square root, cube root, and so on. Now, for the square root, we, we could simplify it as, let's say y equals radical u. Then derivative of y would be derivative u over two radical u. This is only for square root. Now, anything rather than square root, then you have to rewrite it as rational exponent. We will come for it now. Now, let's differentiate this one. Y equals radical. 7x power 3 minus x. Then you say, we need u and the derivative of u. And let you be 7x power 3 minus x. So what else we need? We need derivative u. We are applying the power rule now. 3 times 7, 21. x to power, we subtract 1. Then you will have 2. And also we know that derivative of, f of, of x is only 1. So minus 1. Now, finally, we will write derivative of y which is this one. Derivative u, which is 21x, power 2, minus 1, over 2, radical u itself, which is 7x, 3, minus x. Now, this rule, we apply it only for a square root. And of course, you might say, what about if I have a different root? What about if I have a cube root? Now, as we mentioned, you have to rewrite it as rational exponent before you differentiate. How we rewrite as rational exponent? It's, it's simple. Now, let's say that we have 
root, whatever root here, u to power. No, uh, we will come for this one later because it would be the chain rule. Let's just say x. x to power p. Then you rewrite it as x to power p over r as a rational exponent. Now, once you rewrite it as x to power p over r, it's similar to power rule, which is x to power n. Now, let's take a quick example. f of x is equal to, we say that we have seventh root of x power 14. Then I will rewrite it as rational exponent before I differentiate. Because sometimes you have to rearrange in order to differentiate. So we have x to the power 14 over 7. This one represents p as a power or degree, and this one is the root p over r, so 14 over 7. So you will end up with x power 2. However, now we differentiate. So this one, all of it, it's only x power 2 after rewriting. Power rule. You take the two down, so you will have two x, and you subtract one. It's one. So I don't need to write one, and that's it. Now, you may say, what about if I have a rational? All right, just take a rational. If I have y equals one over x, this one you can rewrite it. We will rewrite it as. Now, we know that if we have x, 1 over x to the power p, in order to rewrite it as linear, you will write it as x to the power minus p. It's not linear exactly, but it looks like that one. Now, x to the power minus p, still power root. Similar to this one. Now, let's take one example. If I have y equals 3 over x power 4, then you will say, wait, I don't like this x power 4 here. I'll just take it up to a numerator, and I will change the sign. So we'll have y equals 3 times x to the power minus 4. Now we apply the power rule, minus 4 times 3, is minus 12 x to the power minus 4 minus 1 is a minus 5 now sometimes you can rearrange it you can take the x to the power minus 5 you can take it back to denominator and change the sign of the degree or you can just keep it at this form it depends what the question is demanding now let's say here we have minus 5 minus 12 over x power 5 so whenever you change from denominator to numerator or from numerator to denominator, you change the sign of the degree as a reciprocal. However, now, also in this week, we are going to talk about if I have the natural base E, if I have Y equals sorry about that, uh, I don't know why the board is doing this, but however, uh, let's try to continue. If I have y equals e to power x, then the derivative would be e power x, and that's it. Now, what about if I have y equals e to power u, where u is a function? Then the derivative would be derivative u times E u. And this one is u, it's not 4. But I'm having a hard time with the with the board. Anyway, so let's take one example about this one because this one don't need to talk about. Now if I have e y equals e to the power 5x squared minus 3. This one, as we said, it follows the rule of e u, where the derivative would be derivative u times e u now of course as you can see here let u be 
5 x squared minus 3. Then what else we need? We need derivative u. So all right, just differentiate u. 2 times 5 is 10. Then subtract 1 is 10x, and the constant is gone. It's done. So derivative y is equal to derivative u, which is 10x, times eu itself, the original one. 5x squared minus 3. So the idea here, in order to differentiate whatever we have, there is rule. There is always a rule for anything to differentiate. So what we need to do, we need to memorize all the rules and the practice. So you differentiate really quick. However, now, what about if I have two functions multiplied by each other, or two functions divided by each other, or what about if I have a function inside a function as composite function? Now, before we go for that, Let's finish the last rule regarding the exponential and logarithms. Someone may say, what about if I have a constant to power u? Y equals, for example, a constant to power u. Let's say b power u. Well, b could be any number. Then what would be the derivative? Now, of course, this one is quite different from the other rule of EU. We cannot apply the rule of EU here. So here, we will have derivative U with B. First of all, we will start with len B multiplied by BU multiplied by derivative U. So it's really different from EU when you have BU or CU or AU. So it's just letters representing constant. Let's take one example about this one. F of X is equal to um, seven to the power three X plus five. Then all right, derivative would be we will start with len base, which is len 7, times bu itself, which is the function itself. 3x plus 5 times derivative u. Now this one is your u. So the derivative of this one would be only 3. So times 3. Or you can just simplify it as 3 ln 7, 7 to the power 3x plus 5. Now let's go for, if I have two functions multiplied by each other, so let's say y equals u times v. Then this one we, we call it product rule. You will say uv plus uv. Derivative first, derivative second. Now let's take one quick example about this one. We say y equals e power x multiplied by 5x power 3 plus 10x. Now in this case, you will say, okay, these functions are multiplied by each other. Let one, let this one be u. And this one v so u is e power x and derivative of u still e power x now let's go for the v v is 5x power 3 plus 10x so derivative v would be 15x squared plus 10. now we are going to plug into the product rule okay well, no need to erase so let's just say this our box something wrong happened so just ignore the box and continue normally
u derivative y equals uv plus uv first derivative second. Now, derivative u, which is e upon x, multiplied by v, which is this one, 5x over 3 plus 10x plus u, which is still e power x, multiplied by derivative v, which is this one, 15x squared plus 10. And this one is the product rule. Now, what about if I have two functions divided by each other, or quotient? You say that we have a quotient. Just take this toolbar back, and let's clear all the drawing and start all over. Now, if you have y equals u over v, the director will say, okay, it's a quotient rule. uv minus uv over v squared. Again, first, second. This one is a v, guys. Okay, so let's apply this rule. Let me change the red. Let's take black. Y equals. You say that we have. Let's make it a little bit more than the usual. Here, let's take 3x power 4 minus 3 all over. Let's take e power 5x plus 4. This is u. And this is v. So in order to apply the quotient rule, we need derivative u and derivative v. Let's start with u. Now u is 3x power 4 minus 3. So derivative u is 12x power 3. And the constant is gone. That's it. Now for the v, v is e power 5x plus 4. So the derivative would be, this one follows the rule of eu, which is derivative u, eu. Now this one is u. The derivative of this one is only 5. So we'll have 5 times eu, which is 5x plus 4. I don't see any space here, so let's try to find the space, hopefully. Uh, no. All right, let's find the space by ourselves. All right. Sorry about that. Now we will apply the quotient rule, which is y equals uv minus uv over v squared derivative first, derivative second. Now let's plug in. Derivative u, 12x power 3, times v, which is e to the power 5x plus 4 minus u, not u, u, u as you are a person, but this u, 3x, 4, 4, minus 3, I hope I can find the space for the end, times derivative v, which is 5, e to the power 5x plus 4 all over v squared. So e power 5x 
plus 4 all square. It looks weird. It looks long. But it's simple. Now, we will come for the last rule, which is the chain rule. Now, if I have y equals u power n, and as we mentioned earlier, over and over, u is a function. So it's like you are writing f of x to power n. It's the same. Now, it looks like you may say, oh, it's a power rule. Yeah, it's a power rule, but you need to differentiate the inside. This is, we call it chain rule. Now we take the power down, u to power n minus one, times derivative u. Chain rule, or same thing here, n times f of x to power n minus one times derivative of f of x. Now let's take one example. If you have y equals 15x power 3 minus 40x plus 10 or to power 8. You say, okay, we will follow the procedure. We will multiply 8, 15x power 3, minus 40x plus 10, and we subtract 1, so we'll have 7. But wait, don't forget the derivative of the inside, which represents u. So 3 times 15 is 45, x power 2, minus 40x has derivative of minus 40, and the constant we don't differentiate it, or we differentiate it to zero, but who will write zero? And that's it. This one's the chain rule. However, I hope that summarize everything about what we had, and hopefully next week, we are going to start differentiating trigonometry, and we will use trigonometry rules. In this, in this video, we had product rule, quotient rule, and chain rule. Also, we talked about the exponential and logarithms and the power rule. Next week, hopefully, we will see you soon.